with Blue Star Limited Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. We have with us today from the management, Mr. B. Tiagaradhan, Managing Director, Blue Star Limited, and Mr. Nikhil Sohoni, Group Chief Financial Officer, Blue Star Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listening only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. V. Tiagarajan. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to join uh, this particular uh, briefing from Blue Star Limited for the Q4 FI24 uh, results and the FI24 consolidated results. Uh, you might have seen the uh, results declared yesterday after the board meeting, and uh, we are happy to report that uh, as in the past, uh, we have uh, closed the financial year on a high note with an impressive performance in Q4 FY24. Um, the, as you may recall, uh, the financial year began with uh, huge expectations uh, during the summer season of uh, 2023. But then, uh, due to rains, it was the quarter that was impacted. But even then, a Q1, uh, the, the, we exceeded the or outperformed the market uh, estimates. From then on, uh, Q2 and Q3, you have seen our results. It was an all round uh, performance, both in uh, B2B businesses as well as B2C businesses. During the financial year, our investments continued in manufacturing capacity expansion as well as the research and development and marketing and distribution. Uh, of significant importance is uh, our uh, YC fundraising amounting to these uh, thousand crores for funding the growth. We are, uh, we are happy to uh, inform that uh, the financial year uh, FI23 also has begun uh, with uh, huge uh, demand, uh, unprecedented demand in the room air conditioners category due to ongoing uh, summer season. I will hand it over to Nikhil uh, for an update on uh, Q4, FI24 and FI24 uh, financial performance and uh, post that uh, we will be happy to answer your queries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tagarajan. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Nikhil Sony, and I will be providing you an overview of the results of Blue Star Limited for quarter ended March 2024. Coming to financial highlights, the company ended FY24 on a high note with a revenue growth of 21.4%, operating profit growth of 34.9%, a record carry forward order book amounting to Rs. 5,697.3 crores against FY23 position of Rs. 5,073.2 crores and a strong balance sheet. In an all-round performance, all businesses performed well, getting market share, and the company improved its operating margins by 70 basis points. In FY24, we have reported, reported an operating margin of 6.9% versus 6.2% in FY23. The company continues to invest for future growth with a focus on research and development, manufacturing, sales and distribution, digitalization, talent development, and capability building. Coming to quarter ended March 31, 2024, financial highlights for the quarter ended on a consolidated basis are summarized as follows. Revenue from operations for quarter 4 FY24 grew 26.8% to 3,327.8 crores as compared to Rs. 2,623.8 crores in quarter 4 of last year. In the top for Quarter FY24 uh, is rupees 241.9 crores, a margin of 7.3% as compared to rupees 179.2 crores, a beta margin of 6.8% reported in Q4 of last year. 
DBT before exceptional items grew 46.4% to rupees 214.1 crore in Q4 of the current year as compared to rupees 146.3 crores in the Q4 of last year. Coming to year end results, on a consolidated basis, the revenue from operations for FY24 grew 21.4% to rupees 9,685.4 crores as compared to rupees 7,977.3 crores in the corresponding last year. In a bit, uh, if you look at excluding other income for FY24, it improved to rupees 664.9 crores, a margin of 6.9% of revenue as compared to rupees 492.8 crores, margin of 6.2% of revenue in FY23, recording a growth of 34.9%, mainly due to impact of scale. PDT before exceptional items grew 44.9% to rupees 557.2 crores in FY24, as compared to rupees 384.6 crores in FY23. Tax expense for FY24 was rupees 142.8 crores as compared to rupees 154.7 crores in FY23. The effective tax rate was 25.7% in FY24 as compared to rupees 27.9% in FY23. Net profit for FY24 grew to rupees 414.3 crores by 4.3% of revenue as compared to rupees 261.49 crores 3.3% of revenue, and this is excluding the profit on sale of Kanye land, which was reported as an exceptional uh, income last year. In view of the record revenue and profits earned by the company, a dividend of rupees 7 per share against rupees 6 per share declared in FY23 is recommended by the board of directors of the company. This, this figure for FY23 is adjusted for bonus of 1 is to 1. The carry forward order book as of March 31, 2024 grew by 12.3% to 5,697.3 crores as compared to 5,073.3 crores as of March 31, 2023. Capital employed as of March 31, 2024 stood at 2,156.7 crores as compared to rupees 1,542.3 crores as of March 31, 2023 primarily owing to capital investments. In September 23, company completed a successful fundraise of rupees 1,000 crores to its maiden quality issuance, which witnessed strong response from existing and new marquee foreign portfolio investors, sovereign world wealth funds, and top domestic institutional investors. In June 23, the company had issued bonus shares in the ratio of 1 is to 1, that is one bonus equity share of rupees 2 each, for every fully paid equity share of rupees to each. On the back of a strong operating cash flows, coupled with QIP inflows, the company reported a net cash position of 455.9 crores as compared to, uh, as of March 31, 2024, as compared to a net borrowing of rupees 208.4 crores as of March 31, 2023. Coming to business highlights, segment one, that is electromechanical projects and commercial air conditioning systems. Revenue grew 20.3% to rupees 1,506 crores in Q4 FY24 as compared to rupees 1,252.6 crores in Q4 FY23. Segment result was rupees 112.5 crores, 7.5% of revenue in Q4 of FY24 as compared to rupees 99.2 crores that is 7.9% of revenue in Q4 FY23. Segment revenue for the year grew 17.4% to rupees 4,715.5 crores as compared to rupees 4,015.6 crores in FY23. Segment result was rupees 341.1 crores, 7.2% of revenue in FY24 compared to rupees 276.8 crores which was 6.9% of revenue in FY23. Order inflow for the quarter reduced by 7.8% to rupees 1,226.8 crores as compared to rupees 1,329.9 crores in Q4 FY23. 
this was on account of delay in finalization of orders coming to electro mechanical project business driven by strong demand from manufacturing data centers and infrastructure segments the business continues to do well with improved margins and healthy order book the demand from commercial buildings and real estate sectors are yet to take off we continue to be focused on prudent project management and healthy cash flows during the year quite a few major orders were received from factories data centers and infrastructure segments and the carry forward order book for the business to that rupees 4343.8 crores as of march 31 2024 and this compares to rupees 3892.9 crores as of march 31 2023 a growth of 11.6% coming to commercial air conditioning systems the revenue growth was majorly driven by product portfolio and channel expansion the growth is driven by demand from industrial healthcare hospitality retail educational institutions and data centers the launch of vrf light has enabled the company to address the premium residential segment the inquiries and demand for newly launched centrifugal chiller remain strong and we continue to maintain our number one position in conventional and inverter ducted air conditioning systems as well as crawl chillers and strong second position in vrf and screw chiller coming to international business due to global disturbances international business which is a nascent stage saw a subdued performance we are focused on product exports and hence we are investing in r&d to expand our product portfolio our subsidiaries in us and europe are engaging with customers and we expect the business to pick up traction soon segment 2 that is unitary product segment the revenue grew 34.8% to rupees 1708.9 crores in q4 fy24 as compared to rupees 1267.7 crores in q4 of fy23 segment results improved to rupees 141.4 crores which is 8.3% of revenue in the current q4 of fy24 as compared to rupees 106.9 crores which was 8.4% of revenue in q4 of fy23 revenue for the year grew 26.6% to 4592.2 crores in fy24 as compared to rupees 3626.9 crores in fy23 consequently segment results improved to rupees 360.3 crores which is 7.8% of the revenue in fy24 as compared to rupees 282.31 crores which was also 7.8% of the revenue in fy23 in cooling and purification product business which is part of the unitary products momentum gained during festive season in q3 fy24 was further boosted by a stellar performance in q4 of fy24 the exceptional strong demand in the southern region and the product diversification especially with the range of affordable room ac has sur- surpassed the milestone of 1 million units our market share during the year improved and is estimated to be at 13.75% compared to 13.5% in fy23 the launch of new inverter split air conditioners and the flagship model like heavy duty acs and super energy efficient acs aided substantial revenue growth it is anticipated that with enhanced product range and prevailing hot summer weather conditions the growth momentum will continue in q1 of fy25 coming to commercial refrigeration business the commercial refrigeration business witnessed excellent traction in the quarter with strong demand witnessed from oem hospitals offices and educational institutions increase in outside the home consumption remains one of the major drivers of the business growth especially in the perishable food sector blue star became the first indian company to receive india design mark for its 300 and 600 liter deep freezers and also got a bi certification as well for deep freezers we continue to maintain our leadership position in deep freezers storage water coolers and modular cold rooms coming to segment 3 there is professional electronics and industrial systems the revenue grew 8.3% to 112.1 crore in q4 fy24 as compared to rupees 104.5 crores in q4 fy23 segment result was rupees 13.6 crores which is 12.1% of revenue in q4 of fy24 
as compared to rupees 19.8 crores, which was 19.2 percent of revenue in Q4 of 2023. Segment revenue for the year grew by 12.8 percent to rupees 377.7 crores, as compared to rupees 334.8 crores in FY23. Segment result was rupees 51.5 crores, which is 13.6 percent of revenue in FY24. As compared to rupees 50.5 crores, which was 15.1 percent of revenue in FY23, the market for non-destructive testing business has grown due to Make in India-related capacity expansion, as well as the introduction of high-quality standards and specifications in various industries. The healthcare business is benefiting from expansion of country's semi-rural healthcare infrastructure and increased investments. The data security business continues to face challenges. as customers move from on premise it infrastructure to the cloud coming to business outlook robust demand across business and geographies buoyant festive season new product launches and other weather conditions enabled us to end the year on a high note with healthy revenue growth and margin profile we continue to invest in expansion of our distribution network enhance r&d and manufacturing capabilities to strengthen our brand recognition in the market the company continues to be acknowledged by the government of india for adopting greener technologies that are ahead of its curve leading to sustainable growth in fy25 the company will continue its focus on maintaining and improving margins prudent cash management and effective talent management given the weather forecast projecting a robust summer ahead with our new and resilient product portfolio and focus on aforementioned key levels we are optimistic about the business prospects for q1 fy25 in particular and fy25 in general with that ladies and gentlemen i'm done with my opening remarks i would like to now pass it back to the moderator who will open the floor to questions we'll try and answer as many questions as we can and to the extent we are unable to we'll get back to you via email with that we are open for questions thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question ladies and gentlemen wait for the moment while the question queue assembles first question is from the line of bhumika nayar from dam capital please go ahead yeah good morning sir and congratulations for a good set of numbers um sir we've seen a very strong quarter um, and as a year as also you know for the quarter we've seen 35% growth and for the year we've seen a 27% growth for the uh, ucpl segment uh, so your how would have the rec segment growth and the commercial refrigeration uh, business uh, would have grown can you please split that uh, for us so oh. uh, you know I, i think i am participating in the call for now 20 years i think the the problem is this i i i can empathize with the investors uh, with the, you know with regard to this requirement of uh, the break up day so what are all there if there is to recap there is the room air conditioner very negligible uh, volume of water purifiers air purifiers air coolers then you have got commercial refrigeration products which are water coolers deep freezers and the cold room uh, now uh, it becomes a selective disclosure so i i i am really not able to solve this problem now the uh, another angle uh, you know we decide to restate the complete thing then it will it will make sense for but but uh, if i were you i i will be going by what is my market share in room air conditioner and the what is the room air conditioner market size that is the only way you will be able to guess that i i don't want to get into a uh, selective disclosure so you have to bear with us for this internally also we keep discussing this that whether 
some point of a time we should go ahead and uh, break that up see in our internal mis and other things there are there there is there is also constraint we have because the factory serve multiple businesses there is the brand related and there are common dealers and uh, this has been the concept they originally the conceived is on the basis where there is a etc part of it and uh, package air conditioning which are commercial air conditioning there then we kept this as we grow both the businesses are growing and whether at some point of a time we will give a break up ac just go by room air conditioners or market share that will then guide you that what portion of that is uh room air condition what portion is commercial refrigeration sure profitability why do you not worry both are same kind of profitability they enjoy got it sir uh sir I, I, you know in uh, as you mentioned that you know we're seeing a very strong summer and a very strong demand um what is your estimate that you know the industry will see a growth in 1q of fi 25 and potentially in fi as a year as a whole and number two related question is that you know with the recent increase in raw material prices have we taken any price hikes uh, either in 4q or in 1q so far so uh, i I'll, i'll deal with that the approximately because the demand is good prices are holding between q4 and q1 there has not been any price increase we launched the new products from uh, january and we have announced the prices and the scheme so that there is holding on so there is no change in that uh, i don't think in the market also you are seeing uh, any kind of uh, massive price disruptions that that's that's way whether we are increasing the prices because the demand is uh, huge and there is there are shortages in pockets i i don't think so because it will be that has not been the principal blue star has been operating just because uh, we we if there is huge demand and shortage we should go ahead and increase so that's not happening now coming to uh, market projection so from uh, january february on we have been saying the market can grow uh, anywhere between 20 to 25% we want to grow between 25 to 30% that that was my uh, outlook now going back even in march that is what we thought till march third week march fourth week uh there was a huge uh, surge in demand from the dealers and uh, despite the fact that there is there is there is ongoing election season due to which in the past we have seen in 2019 as well as 2014 and uh, we uh, the, we were not anticipating that kind of demand the march to march alone i i my estimate is the market would have grown or the or the primary sales would have grown by around 40% now april uh, my estimate i may be wrong i do not have the full picture by my estimate is the market would have say for primary sales of april alone would have grown between 65 to 75% and if you take the secondary sales because march last week enough material was there i think anywhere between to 70 to 90% growth would have been there in secondary treasury sales in the month of april okay now second part the peak had been in may may month it moved to may 15th the peak some uh, in the over the years i'm saying it moved to uh, april uh, may first week the april last week now i have a feeling that uh, it, it is people are because there is a huge consumer finance and other facilities is available and the people are going ahead and buying ahead so it is quite likely that april it has peaked uh the, the my own team may not like it uh, the industry may not like it i i have a feeling may demand may be lower than april i you know it it it, it may be unrealistic to expect that there is again around 70% kind of a demand growth in may and then it will be june july like that now keeping all this in mind whether 25 to 30% growth holds good 
uh, I think it may be better than that when the summer eventually ends. And uh, but equally, we are not believing at this moment the growth can be summer to summer. That is, take uh, March to July, March to July this year. No, the last year is not comparable anyway. Uh, we, if you take the normal summer year. It will be a fifty percent growth. We are not yet believing. It will be better than thirty percent for the full summer season. If you take Q1 alone, I I I think it can be thirty to forty percent growth is my view. It can. We have to wait for May fifteenth to revise that. But over the years, my experience is it starts off like that. You you have seen last year reports. The there was a report. Uh, by an industry association and some of the players that the, the, it is going to be 90% growth. Uh, market will double this summer. It, it didn't happen. So uh, broadly, the people have the, the summer has set in early and people have advanced to their purchases. It will keep coming down. Is my view. But uh, but April. Uh, primary sales itself witnessed uh, around the 65% uh, growth, and uh, secondary tertiary uh, would have been anywhere between 70 to 90. Keep in mind the material was uh, there in the last week or delivered in the last week of March, and there are shortages in quite a few pockets. Got it. So, sir, I mean, given this scenario, do we expect margin profile to improve? You know, this year also, if you see the segment sales has been growing by about 27 percent, but our margins have pretty much held on at 7.8 percent. Do you think that this can possibly improve to eight and a half, nine percent into FI 25, given the strong demand that we see? I, I, uh, at this juncture, we are we, are, we, we have a, we have another uh, many 11 months to go. Uh, the there will be many twists and turns. All will take place. An uh, important event will be the the union budget. Uh, important uh, decisions will be made in terms of uh, supply chain. What are the what are the items that will be brought under QCO? Like uh, copper, this was there because it was uh, time was extended. Uh, there is a there is PCB related uh, announcements are expected. So uh, in a in a business there are many many moving parts. All this will happen. But broadly, uh, in uh, we are of the view that it can be around 8.5 percent. That is the that is the thing that we are uh, we are working with. Sure, sir. I'll come back in the question queue. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two questions per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Nitin Arora from Access Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, you know, uh, just on the profitability of the UCP segment. Can you answer this first for this quarter when you are growing at 34 percent? Last quarter we grew 36 percent. Our margins are like 7.1 and 8.3. Even in absolute EBITDA growth, EBIT growth, you are matching your revenue growth. Can you first throw some light why this is happening? Because I mean, either there is no zero operational leverage in the business, or we are trying to be more aggressive, which doesn't argue well. I mean, you yourself saying industry has a very good tailwind right now because of the summer season. Can you just clarify why such low profitability? I, yeah, given that uh, you know, th thank you for your question. Uh, but given the outlook that we had indicated, uh, I I don't think uh, one should be uh, unhappy. Where, where are you getting that? We had we had given an outlook. Correct, and the uh, so where is that coming from, uh, sir? Outlook uh, was given. So, for example, let's say uh, even I don't think that when the outlook was given, you would not be expecting that Q4 will be a 35% growth, right? 
so my question is not on related to what has been the outlook versus what is given obviously it's in a new guidance range but nobody knew in january that march and april would be such uh, heat season and you yourself saying has not come into picture march alone has come into picture. exactly exactly so you're growing at 35% okay you are talking about q4 to q4 margin of segment 2 uh yes sir uh the segment to stand alone margin for q4 uh, what is the figure segment 3% 8.3% okay now yes. the uh, you, uh, you know you may you may ask compared with uh, with this for the same revenue growth why it is not We have to note that the huge advertising expenses has mm -hmm. has been uh, ha has been you know uh, there in Q4, right? Because the IPL okay. started, advertising campaign started. If the material is moving out to the primary channel, mm -hmm. you have to support it with advertising. So there is an advertising expense surge in that quarter. Okay. Okay. Now you have to yeah, the right way to compare in a good summary here is mm -hmm. Q1 margin you have to look at it and uh, Q4 margin you have to look at it and that gives a broad indication of how the full year will be. Mm -hmm. Now last in FY24 Q1 is not um, uh, is not the um, spotted to be accounted for segment two because it is a wash of summer season. Okay. In Q4. The volume surge equally we have incurred advertising expense. It is not due to pricing or margin. Mm -hmm. the, the it is the operating margin. The cost has come in. Is ad expense optically very high deliberately in Q4 because that would be every Q4, right? Uh, so is this Q4 was was not, quite high? Not, not necessary at all. It is, okay. is like like for example. Okay. You, it depends on how you how you are. You, if you are going to be in IPL and substantial number of matches are happening in IPL and the package that you have got is that way, okay. it can. And because of the elections, IPL number of matches and number of matches in which we were there would have, would have been high. Got it. Advertising expense of this Q4 is very high. Got it. Got it. And yeah. again, you have to look at it that in Q3 it was 7.1 percent, so it is yeah. an 8.3 against 7.1 percent in Q3, which was also a good call. No, he is asking about the operating leverage, and he is assuming that the cost will remain the same. The additional quantity sold in March would have substantially improved the margin. In Q3 there was no advertising expense that comes in Q4. That is a problem. This year is just like that. So just second question uh, is uh, on the export side because um, I think we're doing a lot of R&D there uh, as well. Uh, when do you see start seeing ramp up of the export business and any targets in mind over the next two years? How big this can become? That's my last question. Thank you. Yeah, see, I, I I think it will be at least the 18 months. We are executing some trial orders. And uh, then you you know the US Europe there had been a slowdown and it is it is reviewed as it is good for us because it gives us time to develop our products and the US market is expected to pick up only in the coming year post the elections I don't think before election you will see US ramping up with the you know they are they are not selling the regular air conditioners air conditioning solutions it is. Decarbonization, uh, energy efficiency improvement related products, and therefore uh, the regulations and the brands there will have to ramp up. So there are trial orders. Trial orders are being executed. Necessary approvals are being obtained, and uh, it is in 18 months it should ramp up. Whether we have internal target, we do have internal target because if we are in this thing. Uh, we should be having uh, tight targets closely monitored by the board. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Evindus Park. Please go ahead. Uh, 
thanks a lot for taking my question and congrats on a good set of numbers sir my question is with respect to the first segment uh, the order inflow oh, kind of has seen a bit of decline over the past two quarters and i think for the full year also it had been kind of uh, slightly subdued compared to the last year how do you see the industry how the industry would have grown in fy24 over last year and how is it likely to grow uh, which are the sub segments which are promising in terms of growth and why the softness for us are we kind of a bit conservative in taking orders you had mentioned that there were some kind of finalizations uh the delays which were there will be see a uh, better lumpy kind of orders flowing in post elections if you can throw your thought process on this will be great sir thank you i i i uh, you know i think you are the only person monitor this other than uh, blue star management the the uh, your your questions are valid we have been seeing a slow down in some of the segments basically the uh commercial building segment there has been delay some of the infrastructure projects also there is a delay and our understanding is that post elections it should pick up and uh, there are quite there are enough tenders and uh, the the openings of the tender negotiations and finalization of commercial terms these are all getting delayed the growth primarily is now driven by the uh, manufacturing and uh, data centers and uh, so therefore uh, those orders you uh, cannot compensate for large infrastructure projects this is the uh, this is a first answer second one is that you are very clearly aware that we are we are not chasing the market share there at all we mm. we, we we are very clear that uh, Uh, it should be free cash flows and how timely execution will take place to the extent possible and uh, industry uh, it will be the same it's not that there is some new player to whom we are losing the orders it's not so and uh, yeah it is uh, it, it should revive sometime in uh, Q2 again. Our direction here is there is no point in sitting on huge record carried forward order book. It doesn't help in any manner at all. In fact, it is it is dangerous to be having a huge order book because while you may have price escalations, you may not get everything out there. And uh, so we are now focusing on the uh, data center manufacturing, that kind of projects. wait for the uh, infra projects to get uh, the order finalization cycle to begin uh, in the meanwhile uh, expediting the speed of execution and collection okay and uh, is there a mix in, in terms of our advantage as of now like uh, certain sub segments like data center or manufacturing which carry better do they carry better margins than the Uh, overall average and because of that profitability which is like 7% can go back to 10% which we used to do in 10 11 12 and all is there a possibility of that happening keeping in mind the combo so, so 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 three parts the number one is are are there uh, is, is are the jobs of manufacturing data center are more profitable it will be for the simple reason they are uh, fast track execution projects and uh, therefore it should be uh, compared with the intra projects which is uh, you know three years to an half years like the metro railway or water airport and all that and uh, obviously the answer is yes and uh, the second part uh, is uh, is uh, connected with the uh segment uh, see uh, some point of a time we will do we couldn't do this in this particular con call we will try to give a break up of comparison of last year as well as this year key segments what has been we will provide that uh in the subsequent uh, quarter when we when mm-hmm. we engage, when we engage with you for the q1 results we will indicate that the margin i do not think uh, it can be 10% at all even though 
there is significant amount of package air conditioning that the VRF uh, that cooler that part the 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 manufacturing and same service part is part of segment one. Even then, I do not think so. Uh, they, 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 because uh, because the uh, EPC business, uh, it can only be a uh, uh, you know four to five percent EBITDA. Yeah, it is pushed up because of the manufacturing and service elements that come in that segment. Understood, sir. Thank you. So our our outlook for that segment remains seven to seven and a half percent. And segment one is seven to seven point five percent. Segment two is eight to eight point five percent. In a good summer year, it may be around eight point five percent. Okay. And uh, growth for the first segment, uh, what? How do you envision that next two years? The the uh, the we are we are working towards the. Uh, the, at least this financial year, we are, we are attempting to grow uh, the revenue by uh, 25%. Internally, that's what we are working towards. We don't know what will happen. That is the aspiration. I, I am of the view that the segment 2, there is no problem. The, the growth should be in a good summer year. Full year growth should exceed 20%. So we should do better than that. Segment 1, there is enough order book. Uh, order inflow should come in. And mm -hmm. given that, see, we are selective that product. That market size is huge. The number of products mm -hmm. that are happening, so it mm -hmm. may not be difficult to do 20% growth even in segment one. Understood. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pankit Patni from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, thank you for taking my question. Sir, in line with what uh, I think Nitin had asked earlier, um, we are seeing one of the largest uh, players in this sector being extremely aggressive in terms of pricing. Uh, and that is something we've heard across the board. Uh, is that something that is having a bearing on profitability? So, you know, since volume numbers are so much better, we understand you're spending on advertisement. But is that also an element which A, has kept the margins under check uh, despite such strong volume growth and as we look at the first quarter of this year which again you are indicating is very very strong in terms of volumes could the margins for you and the broader industry be under check because of one player going very aggressive so thank you for the question i i, I, I you know for a, for a particular quarter or a particular uh, season, the answer may be something different. Okay, like, like for example, it, uh, in a huge summer season, there there are shortages. Pricing may not be an issue at all. Okay, for anybody. Now, uh, this has to be taken as uh, you know strategically, given the fact that India is the largest. Uh, uh, India is a market with huge potential. India is the fastest growing market. India's uh, penetration levels will more than double in the next three years to four years. And uh, by 2045 or 47, India can, has the potential to overtake China. In that backdrop, for the room air conditioners business, you can plot what is the demand growth how the competitive landscape is likely to pan out, what is the manufacturing capacity that will be created, already existing in underinvestment, what will be created, what are the supply chain constraints, what are the competitive things and the gaps. If you, if you keep that in mind, I'm going by certain other, uh, other information that is available from other uh, durables, like uh, what happened in refrigerators or washing machines, for example, or two-wheelers, automobiles, um, you can easily conclude that the demand growth is given. You need not worry about it at all. There may be a bad summer in between. Uh, that's fair enough. Demand will continue to grow. Second, uh, it is uh, it, the growth is driven by aspirational middle class. Uh, clear. 
there are yeah, the, the cost structure is impacted by a few other things which is not applicable for other categories. Like for example, uh, once in two years a energy uh, labeling uh, upgrade. Uh, the refrigerant related regulations that are supposed to come in. The highly seasonal nature of the product, therefore the inventory that you have to hold or the manufacturing capacity utilization throughout the year. Uh, extended uh, uh, um, obligation for the uh, e-waste. Uh, consumer finance at its peak, uh, like 55% of the sales happening through consumer finance. If you keep all those elements, uh, and, the, and the advertising that is, that is needed for occupying the share of mind and, and after knowing which are the markets which which are beginning to grow in a big way like size 3, 4, 5. Uh, I am of the opinion that it is it is a market with a, with a 8.5% uh, operating margin. Uh, it is. I, I do not think it is a 10.5%, 11% operating margin market at all. I'm keeping in mind all the durable world markets they are making. Okay. Now, one may say extensive backward integration is happening, and therefore, but then you 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 have to make uh, again R and D investments and many other things, learning curve, etc. Are there before you are able to improve? But then, uh, in a growing market, the competition will also be interested in growing their market share. And uh, I, I do not see anybody being shaken out and thrown because in every country the, the players are, are there, it is known. Now, in that, in that backdrop of it is the 8.5, I, you know, if we are lucky, it can go to 9 at some point of the time. I do not think so. 9 is possible, is my view. Uh, in that context, somebody is pricing lower in one particular year, somebody is uh, gaining market share, somebody is losing market share. We are indifferent to that. We will go ahead and uh, tactically price in some markets, uh, but, but we are very clear that uh, profitably you have to grow the business. And we know eventually it will settle down. If we are to be getting into the game of that, I will drop the prices to gain the market share. One quarter, two quarter, it may happen. It does not yield result. I, I historically, I am not seeing an evidence. Somebody dropped the prices. You can, you can, you can change the game through a product or technology. And lastly, I, I don't think we 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 have that culture at all. Uh, our direction is very clear. We we know what this what the potential uh, revenue uh, possible in this market. What is the margin possible within that set our goals? So can I ask one more? Yeah. Yeah. So my second question is, you know, we've for a long time waited for that J curve in India's AC demand. I mean, if you look at the last 10, 12 years, despite some good, some bad summers as an industry, we've grown at that early 12, 13% kind of rate. Do you think we are at that stage where we are either already hit or hitting that J curve, where that growth rate could be much faster? I mean, I'm saying keeping in consideration the strong real estate demand we are seeing, you know, the low penetrations. I mean, are you of the view this is still an industry that will grow between 12 to 14 percent on a normalized basis, or we could see a five-year period where we could grow faster? Much, much higher is my view. It, it, it is going to explode in the next five years. And why is that? It, it will explode. It, it is exactly like in China what happened post-2005. And uh, it, it will be a very high growth market for this category. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of growth. From Ambed Capital, please go ahead. 
Pardon, thanks for taking my question. So I had a question on the VRF segment. So we have seen that a lot of uh, premium housing projects have been launched and seen good traction there. So is the trend of VRFs being installed, uh, you know, something that you are seeing, uh, something that we've also seen in the developed markets? And how should we think about this category growth in the next four or five years? And also if you could just talk a little bit about the competitive dynamics there. Thanks. Uh, with saying, yeah, VRF, right? Yeah. So the um, in in uh, so so where, where where the VRF comes into play, the uh, VRF comes into play for a very high energy efficiency in the commercial establishment. Uh, the uh, in a residential segment. If it is if it is uh, if it is an apartment, um, which first of all let us understand it in in India residential segment is far bigger than the commercial segment. Um, unlike certain other markets where the commercial segment can be much much larger. Now uh, the calculations will show. Uh, keeping in mind uh, the energy labeling program and uh, and uh, energy efficiencies that we have achieved, if you are looking at a three-bedroom apartment, a, a five-star inverter installed in three bedrooms uh, will have uh, will have the potential to deliver more energy efficiency than a BRF. If you have to look at the cost, because that market size is huge, and therefore the price levels that are operating, again, room air conditioners, five-star, uh, one and a half ton installed. In this particular example of a three-bedroom plus hall, that will, uh, that will pay back uh, faster. Uh, if you have to look at the ease of operation, uh, the the uh, in a in a in a Indian home, uh, I think uh, all bedrooms hall are not occupied, and uh, it is limited usage in the hall or the dining area or the living room. Uh, again, uh, I we are not seeing any kind of a great advantage. Yeah, I'm I'm going purely by. Uh, by the uh, calculations of payback, given that it is it is it is a it is a developing market and it is uh, driven by aspirational middle class, uh, it it will it is not a it will not make commercial sense yet in the residential sense because of the price levels at which five star one and a half air conditioners are available. But having said that. There are uh, there are customers who need sophistication and who are looking for uh, different kinds of solutions. And these may be even larger homes beyond the uh, three bedroom, four bedroom. Uh, VRF is an is an application. So this is about residential part. And uh, commercial part of it, definitely VRF uh, provides uh, far superior benefits in terms of the energy savings, given that if they are all uh, 18 hours, 24 hours, 20 hour applications. And uh, most importantly, uh, compared with the central air conditioning, the installation lead time uh, is very, very faster. You know, there is no dusting insulation, so many other things takes place. Generally, a VRF insulation can be done uh, very, very faster. And uh, they, they, therefore, uh, VRF will continue to grow, but not necessarily uh, like a room air conditioner. Uh, in India, the market size will be far lower compared with residential application. Got it, sir. And sir, I have a question on commercial refrigeration. I think in your opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, that segment was done very well. So just wanted to understand till when do we have the import substitution tailwind, the, the BIS related tailwind that, you know, uh, that we saw. 
uh, have the import substantially dropped or do you think that next two or three years we'll continue to grow at a very healthy pace here? Yeah, thanks. Those are my questions. I, I think that's fully stopped. There is uh, the stopped in the sense that there is a QCO regime and uh, in that QCO regime uh, to go and get approval and those uh, QCO approvals are of limited validity period. So it is not practically uh, to be doing it here. There are only very few categories which are all less than 25 crore market size. It may be some wine cooler and some esoteric applications or it may be connected with some health care related refrigeration products, specialty. Otherwise, the entire deep freezer segment has moved to uh, localization. There may be players uh, who are getting some sub assemblies and trying to put together something. Uh, that may be an inefficient uh, way of doing that is our view. Uh, it, it, is like, it is like room air conditioners there, you are importing some of, uh, some specialty air conditioners from outside. Here again, uh, that's what is happening. It is fully stopped. Got it, sir. And sir, just had a small question on unallocable expenses in the segmental piece, right? So we've seen a lot of variation quarter on quarter, you know, you're on music. Can you just clarify a little bit on that? Thank you. I, I, I think they want you to come back on the queue. They are taking just two questions, I think. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anupam Goswami from Third Life. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. <clears throat> sir, my uh, first question on the overall strategy-wise, where do you think Blue Star market share is and how do you gain market share from here, let's say from the Korean players? Uh, is, is there a strategy to look and expand uh, market share in that premium segment? Uh, no, I first part is that I suppose you are looking at room air conditioners. The uh, the second part is uh, you are, you are looking at the category as a whole. It's not premium alone. I do not have um, within premium what is our market share. I I do not uh, I I do not have that uh, part of it within room air conditioners. But the thing is, in room air conditioners, our estimate is that it's it's thirteen point seven five percent. It may be slightly higher than that, but it is not. It is. And uh, we believe we, we gained uh, market share in even in FI24. And uh, going forward, uh, we had stated that we would like to reach a market share of uh, around 15% in FI25. So the clock has begun. And, uh, and let us see, uh, the gaining uh, market share is, has been one of the important goals and every year from 2011 we have gained market share. So let us see. So uh, our strategy is to look, uh, gain market share in the premium segment or more in the affordable segment? Uh, yeah, no, we are looking, I am talking about the full category. The growth is driven only by affordable segment. Premium segment is growing, but that is not going to, you know, if you have to gain market share, you have to uh, address the bottom of the pyramid. It's all, you know, 65% savings from entire 3, 4, 5 markets. Okay. So lastly, uh, do we face any competition from Daikin, uh, they being producing more affordable ACs now, do we face any threat from them? That's it. Uh, the, uh, no, uh, we face competition from everyone, including Daikin. Um, I, I, uh, I, I won't use the word threat. Competition is supposed to be there in a growing market. We face competition from everyone. Okay, sir. Thank you. I'll join back. Thank you.